kidney stones usually form in the kidney. Specifically, they form in the renal pelvis, which is where urine collects inside the kidney. They may stay there, and if they stay there, they rarely cause symptoms, but they may move, and they'll move down the ureter, which connects the kidney to the bladder. When the stone moves down the ureter, that's when it causes significant pain and discomfort, and that's what we refer to when someone says they're passing a kidney stone. The diagnosis is made by a combination of laboratory work and imaging. Once a kidney stone is confirmed, then you have a few choices. First of all, if the stone doesn't pass by itself, you definitely want to see a urologist. They'll help you think through how to approach the stone or stones that are there and what to do about them. Kidney stones are not preventable, but they're very treatable. And you can decrease your risk of having future kidney stones by following some fairly simple steps. First of all, it's going to be useful to work with a physician who focuses on kidney stone prevention. Usually that's a nephrologist. You'll go see that physician and they'll go through your history and then we'll order some additional testing to try to sort out why you're forming kidney stones. We'll order a urinalysis. We'll order some basic laboratory work in blood chemistries. And probably most importantly, we'll order a 24-hour urine collection. Many times you can do this in the privacy of your own home. And then we'll go over that results, which will show us exactly what's going on in the urine and try to strategize ways to prevent future kidney stones. And this is what we call a metabolic stone analysis. Another important thing, if possible, is to collect a kidney stone if you're passing a kidney stone. So if you're having pain or you think you're passing a kidney stone, it's very useful to ask your physician for a strainer for the urine to try to collect a stone or stone fragment because having that can really help with your management down the road. Different types of kidney stones will have different treatment strategies. Sometimes we don't know the kind of kidney stone that you have, and we'll come up with a strategy that works for most kind of kidney stones. About 80% of kidney stones are calcium-containing kidney stones. About 15 or 20% are uric acid stones. Calcium-containing stones are the most common kind of kidney stone. Sometimes calcium will bind with phosphate. Sometimes it'll bond with a compound called oxalate. These stones are very hard. They uh, tend to form slowly over time, over weeks, years, and months. They are amenable to different treatment strategies. One of the most important things you can do, and this is common to other stones, is fluids, fluids, fluids. So we're going to want to make sure that you're drinking at least three quarters of a gallon a day, about 100 ounces of liquid. Our diets tend to be fairly high in sodium. If we decrease sodium in the diet, that tends to decrease calcium in the urine and can be an important intervention to try to prevent calcium stones. There are other pharmacologic agents we can use to try to decrease the risk of calcium stones. Certain diuretics, known as thiazide diuretics, can decrease the amount of calcium in the urine and we'll sometimes add these in to try to prevent calcium stones. In addition, there is a supplement called potassium citrate or citrate. And we know that citrate can actually prevent calcium from binding to oxalate. And this can also help prevent calcium stones. The second most common kind of kidney stones are uric acid kidney stones. And these are crystals of uric acid. Diets that are rich in animal protein tend to generate more uric acid. And some people just tend to have more uric acid in the urine. So adjusting one's diet to be enriched in fruits and vegetables and more vegetarian can actually help prevent uric acid kidney stones. We can give medications to try to make the urine more alkali. We would use medications such as potassium citrate or sodium bicarbonate. And like all kidney stones, fluids, fluids, fluids. You want to drink plenty of fluids and you want to spread it out over the course of the day. In addition, because we know that kidney stones are associated with being overweight, a lifestyle and diet that promotes some weight loss can be very helpful. We know that changing lifestyle, modifying diet is probably equally important to any medications we might choose. So it's very important when available to work with a dietitian as they can provide insights and specific advice about how to modify your diet to prevent kidney stones in the future. I think it's important to also realize there's a lot of information and potentially even misinformation that's available. And it's really important to get the information about you as an individual, work with a clinician to know exactly what your diet is like and to know your risk factors 
For example, I, I see a lot of patients who avoid calcium, thinking that by avoiding calcium in the diet, by avoiding dairy products, that perhaps they're gonna decrease the risk of kidney stones. Importantly though, we actually know that patients who have kidney stones should take normal calcium intake and that calcium intake is actually associated with a decreased risk of most kidney stones. Regardless of the kind of kidney stones that you have, there are certain things that are generally associated with decreased risk of kidney stones and increased risk of kidney stones. Here is a list of dietary factors that are associated with a increased risk of kidney stones. Sugar-sweetened beverages, high fructose, animal protein, high doses of vitamin C. Here is a list of dietary factors that is associated with decreased risk of kidney stones. Fluid intake, dietary calcium, magnesium, potassium, fruits, fiber, and vegetables. So we can't guarantee that you'll never suffer from another kidney stone. But what we know is that with fairly simple and safe interventions, including more fluids, dietary modification, and occasionally medication therapy, you can decrease your risk of kidney stones and decrease your risk of having a painful kidney stone episode in the future.